The old Belmont mansion had been abandoned for as long as anyone could remember, its once grand walls now overgrown with ivy and shadows. Every local knew the stories, whispers of a strange happenings, eerie sounds at night, and the chilling toll of a bell that no one could locate. No one dared enter, not even the bravest of thrill-seekers, because of one particular tale that had rooted itself deep in the town's lore. It was said that, over a century ago, the mansion had been home to a wealthy family. They had lived in luxury until a terrible storm ravaged the town. The river, normally a calm stream at the base of the hill, swelled into a furious flood, sweeping away homes and lives. The Belmonts, isolated on their hill, heard the church bell ring out for help, but they never answered. They stayed safe behind their heavy oak doors, ignoring the cries of their fellow townspeople. That night, it said that the waters carried more than debris. Something malevolent awoke, and by morning, the Belmont family was never seen again. No one knows exactly what happened to them, but ever since, the sound of a distant bell could be heard from within the mansion's walls, tolling at midnight. The townspeople believed it to be a warning. A call to those who ignored suffering would be cursed to hear the bells toll forever. I'd heard the story plenty of times growing up, but I never believed it. I wasn't even from the town, really, just a visitor staying for a couple of weeks to clear my head. It was a small town, quaint enough to feel far away from the chaos of the city, and I thought a walk through the woods near the Belmont place might help me clear my mind. I hadn't planned on staying so late, but the deep woods have a way of messing with your sense of time. By the time I realized how dark it had become, the sky was a canvas of stars, and the only sound was the soft rustle of leaves in the wind. That's when I saw it, through the trees, the silhouette of the mansion, larger and closer than I expected. I stood there, staring at the decrepit structure. It was eerie, yes, but in a way that made you want to get closer, to satisfy that gnawing curiosity. So I did. The gate was unlocked, hanging on its rusted hinges. The garden beyond was wild, nature having reclaimed it long ago. I hesitated at the front steps, though I wasn't sure why. Maybe it was the weight of the silence, heavier than it had been in the woods, or maybe it was the feeling that something, or someone, was watching. I shook the thought away and pushed open the door. It groaned in protest, and inside the air was musty, filled with the scent of decay and time. The floorboards creaked underfoot, each step echoing through the empty hall. Dust swirled in the light of my flashlight, which flickered for a moment, casting strange shadows along the walls. There was nothing there, just old forgotten furniture and walls that seemed to groan with the weight of the past. I didn't feel scared, just a little foolish. Here I was, in the infamous Belmont Mansion, and it was just an old, empty house. That was, until I heard it, the soft, distant toll of a bell. My heart skipped. It was faint but unmistakable, like the echo of something far away, calling through time. I froze, my breath catching in my throat. It couldn't be real. The stories were just that. Stories. But as the bell rang again, louder this time, my chest tightened. I turned to leave, my instincts finally catching up with me, but the door had shut, slowly, without a sound. Panic rose, but I forced myself to stay calm, to think logically. The wind, it had to be. Maybe I had imagined the bell, but as I took a step back, I heard it again, closer, louder. The sound reverberated through the empty mansion, growing with every second, shaking the walls like a heartbeat. I rushed to the door, pulling at the handle, but it wouldn't budge. Cold sweat trickled down my back as the tolling grew deafening. It was everywhere now, rattling through the woods, shaking the floor beneath me. I could feel it inside my head, pulsing with an energy that didn't belong in this world. Then, suddenly, it stopped. 
everything was silent again. No bell, no wind, nothing. Just the heavy, suffocating quiet of the mansion. I turned around, slowly this time, and my breath caught in my throat. Standing at the top of the grand staircase was a figure, cloaked in shadow. I couldn't make out its face, but I could feel its gaze, cold and ancient. I couldn't move. My feet glued to the floor as the figure descended the stairs, each step deliberate and slow, the air growing colder with each movement. When it reached the bottom, it paused, as if studying me. Then it pointed, slowly, toward the door. The handle rattled. The door, once stuck, creaked open on its own. I didn't need to be told twice. I bolted, stumbling into the night, my breath coming in ragged gasps. Behind me, the mansion loomed, silent and still once more. But as I crossed the threshold of the gate, I heard the bell toll one last time. I never went back, never told anyone what happened that night, but sometimes, when I'm alone, I still hear the distant echo of that bell ringing in the dead of night as if calling me back. But I won't answer. I know better now.